Hello, and welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast, the podcast where we get together as men made in the image of God, our Creator. We don't apologize for what He made us in His very image, strong, dominant, and in control, where we speak the truth and we reject the lies that modern culture and society spits out about toxic masculinity or genders being fluid or violence being malum and say. And we cling to the truth. We get together as men in this tribe, this virtual tribe, and we don't apologize for it. Today's going to be a short episode on a single topic. Trapping, snaring, As always, I'm your host, Michael Melito. First and foremost, I'm a servant of God, a follower of Jesus Christ. God is at the center of everything, and I hope to make him the center of everything in my life, this podcast being no different. Grew up with most who consider monetarily poor in the southeastern United States, hunting and fishing and building traps. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq in the infantry. After my combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the Marine Corps. Also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also served many years in law enforcement. I was LAPD, worked regular assignment and more specialized assignment, fugitive recovery, basically hunting men, fugitives. FBI certified firearms instructor, NRA, a bunch of other certifications and organizational things. Was a private contractor for a three-letter government agency I won't specify. Was blessed to be the commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area where a primary job was to stop active shooters. I've been blessed to hunt all over this beautiful country for putting meat on the table for recreation and for profession. I was I have been a professional big game hunter and guide. Also on that note, I suppose you could include a professional trapper. Certainly not an all-inclusive list of who I am, but let's move on. Let's move on to today's topic. And that's going to be on trapping. Using the brain and the body that God's given you to put animals down. Psalm 91, surely you shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. And whatever man of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you, who hunts and catches any animal or bird that may be eaten, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust. For it is the life of all flesh, its blood sustains its life. Therefore I say to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is in its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. So God's chosen people, it says here, they hunt and they catch things. They hunt and trap. It was a familiar thing. The snare of the fowler. To hunt and catch an animal that may be eaten. So I don't see any moral qualms with it. Hopefully you don't either. It's a way to feed yourself, to feed your animals. It's a way to provide and protect. And if you listen for any amount of time, you know that we're big on that here at the Alpha Male Podcast. The trapping can take many forms. It can be the simple old English, you know, bane of the English gardener's existence, the rabbit in the garden. It can be as simple as a a wooden crate or a box with a stick on it with a rope tied to it or a string tied to it where he sits and waits and the rabbit goes in there and he pulls it and catches it under the box or under the crate it's a very simple trap or it can be a professionally made conibear trap which we'll talk about later there's all manner of ways i guess we'll start off in the beginning i guess with primitive traps you have all manner of primitive traps and this is by no means all inclusive there's probably cultures and the stuff that have traps that have been long since forgotten that nobody even knows about or thinks about anymore but you have some basic ones your deadfall trap and this is basically suspending a log or a big heavy rock with some kind of trigger mechanism usually with a string or a series of sticks 
you don't even need a rope or a string or a cable. You can use a series of sticks to balance that. And then when an animal hits that, that rock or that log or that heavy weight falls on that animal and crushes it and suffocates it. A deadfall trap is a pretty primitive trap. The one that I have the most experience with, whether primitive or not primitive, are snares. And that's where you get some kind of... I prefer metal cable, but some kind of cable or string or, or something. And you make a loop with a knot. Perhaps we should do an entire other episode on manly skills. You ought to have a couple of dozen knots, at least a dozen that you are proficient with and know how to tie. But you take a piece of string or cordage, you make a loop in it, you make a snare. And by whatever means, laying it on the ground, digging a little hole, putting the snare on it, suspending it over a branch or in between something or outside an animal's den there are any number of ways but a snare is a simple effective primitive or modern way to trap an animal and in my experience still one of the most effective perhaps the most quintessential one of this is where you take like a sapling and you bend it over and have some kind of triggering mechanism and like a forked stick or a forked stick with a straight stick on the ground and when the animal touches the snare and pulls it the bent over sapling or or bendy tree whips back and catches the animal it's kind of your quintessential when you're thinking of like a snare you also have you know gravity traps where an animal falls into a pit you dig a pit an animal falls into it you know a very primitive way of hunting was taking big herd animals and running them off a cliff which i suppose you could consider a certain kind of trap and it's really limited by your imagination you remember when you were a kid and you would think about all kinds of stuff i often built traps and booby traps and things like that when i was a kid but you know you didn't lose that imagination hopefully you still have it so tap into it when you're making traps think about it you have a brain god gave you a brain a reasoning a thinking i was going to talk about this later but i guess it fits in now I've heard this said, and I think I heard it on the Meat Eater podcast, but a lot of people fish, most people that hunt fish, and most people that trap hunt and fish, it's kind of a stepping thing as far as dedication and skill and things go. With hunting, you generally have to put yourself in the area of where you think an animal is going to be in a given amount of time. In trapping... You kind of have to picture exactly how that animal is going to move. You might have to get them to be in a couple square inches to effectively get that trap. That includes all manner of things like reading tracks. Reading tracks in the dirt, knowing animals' habits, knowing how they live, knowing what they eat, knowing how they mate. It requires all manner of things. It is not easy. If you think you're just going to have, you know, a couple of snares or something and be able to trap and feed yourself, you know, I hope that works out for you. But in my experience, it's a steep learning curve. Hunting and trapping is a is a thinking man's game, especially spot and stalk hunting and especially trapping. Those two things require quite a bit of thinking and reasoning. Where is that animal going to move? When is it going to move? You know, how tall is its head above the ground? Is its head going to be up when it goes through here or down when it goes through here? It's all manner of things to think about. Can I perhaps change the landscape and make it go in an area that I want it to go? Having dominion over the beasts. We talked about primitive traps. We'll talk about the transition to that. Like I said, I think a snare can be both. I have a few store-bought snares, like a heavy-duty metal cable that are all set up with a one-way metal clasp so that the, the animal can pull it tighter, but they can't get it looser. Talking about snares, I know there's a big thing in, like, survival community. You can take 550 cord and split it apart and make a bunch of different snares. But I would say if the animal has teeth, you can probably get out of that pretty easy. And in general, if you want to be successful trapping, in my opinion, you set several, several traps for every one successful one. So if, you can't, if you're snaring, 
I would suggest getting metal wire. Like I said, the professional, you know, thick metal snares, depending on the size of your quarry. But a good metal snare with a good one-way clasp. And however you're trying to trap and snare, my favorite way and the most effective way for beasts is around the neck. For obvious reasons, I don't want that animal to suffer any more than it has to. But a metal snare, just making a metal loop that slips, that you can suspend where you think, where you believe that animal is going to move. And actually my favorite way to snare to feed myself is snaring birds. Snaring birds is great. A lot of times, I don't know about international listeners, but in America there's a lot of invasive species. Things like pigeon, things like starling, things like... Eurasian collared doves. If you want a good place to start trapping, I would consider snaring Eurasian collared doves. Very thin metal wire or very thin, robust, you know, fishing fishing line or spectra braided line. Very thin. And you can do something as simple as... I talked about when I was a commander of a tactical team in a large metropolitan area. I live in a, in a big urban center. I would still trap and eat. A simple way to do that is just take a a simple tent stake and make several snares around it on the ground and throw some rice or some, some oats or just some very simple bait on the ground and get those birds to come in there. Make several snares in a pattern so that when they walk through there, they get caught. If you're not willing to, you know, trap and eat a Eurasian collared dove, this episode might not be for you, but... I mean, they're like natural little protein bars. They're delicious. And they're delicate and they're great. They're easy to clean. If you want an easier barrier to entry to feed yourself, you know, trapping something like a a dove or a pigeon. And literally, you can just wring their head off with your hands, pour the blood out like we just read in the Bible, let the blood spill out, then you can open up their their the skin on their breasts and literally with your fingers you can just rip the breast meat off throw it on a stick put it in a fire and then eat it i suggest a little bit of salt but that's really all you need you need a couple of pieces of wire or string something to tie it onto and a way to make fire and then you have a way to feed yourself And like I said, almost any environment that you're in, I imagine you have some kind of bird that you can trap and eat. I will start, I guess I should have started, but I'll say the caveat now is that you have to check your local laws. Some things like your Asian collar dove in a lot of places have pretty much no regulation. But check your local laws and see what's legal and what's not legal. A lot of places you need a a license to trap for whatever. So check and make sure you're all good on that. But that's an an easy way to get started, snaring birds. The next easy one I almost skipped because I thought I had no experience in it, but I thought back and I do have some. The next one is fish. Now, I thought I didn't have much experience because I think of fish traps. I think of like the primitive ones made with like a stick and a stream where you you like change the pattern of the sticks or the rocks to get them go in a certain area and then catch them. Or And I've never done that. But what I have done growing up is trot lines. A trot line is basically fishing where you're not there and you take a long cable or string and you attach several hooks with bait onto it. And that depends on the size of fish you're going for. That depends on all manner of things. But it's called a trot line. You can get them that float. You can get them that sink. You can get make them go from the very top of the water column to the bottom with a weight. However you want to do it. And you can catch fish like that. And it is very effective. And you can catch fish and not even have to be there. You could say set your trot line up on your way to work and then check it on your way home. It, again, if it's legal. Uh, similar to that are jug lines. You just take like a jug, a one gallon jug or something like that and set your bait on that. And they kind of pull the bait down and the buoyancy of the jug popping back up catches that animal. And then uh, I think I mentioned it once before. My father is a commercial fisherman. I grew up doing that and helping out with him. So I would guess netting. You could consider fish nets kind of a way, kind of a fish trap. I didn't think about that, and there's all manner of seines and gill nets. And if you think of like a very primitive way is the cast nets where you have it and you 
you spool it up on your arm and you throw it out in like a circle and it flies out in the water in a circle and drops down and catches fish. I suppose you could consider that a fish trap. But netting fish is certainly as effective. That also be an, a nice easy way to start. They also do make, and I've never really used them, the automatic fishing reels where you like pull it out and set the bait and then when they bite it, it like spools it in and keeps tension on the line. I've seen those. I think somebody may have even given me one, but I don't think that I've ever used one or bothered with them. But they do exist. So trapping birds, trapping fish. We get into trapping animals. Now, I don't any longer eat animals that go forth on paws. I did growing up. I grew up a heathen, and I grew up pretty poor. I would eat squirrel and rabbits and things like that. I don't anymore, but I will say they make fine dog food. But that's a, a pretty common thing like we talked about. You could just get... A kind of make your own trigger mechanism if you don't want to stand by and monitor it and get wooden crates and set them up with sticks and catch rabbits and and things like that i suppose if you live in an urban environment and it's all you can do you can probably trap mice and rats now don't eat those i hope but if you can trap those you still learn principles of trapping i would imagine you can learn where effective places to and not set traps are maybe you catch them with just regular mouse traps or rat traps at first and then you try and figure out how to catch them with snares or things like that or deadfalls and make your own traps even if you can't legally trap other animals right now perhaps you can do that and one you'll get rid of those nasty things around your house and and where you live so maybe that's a way to start even if it's not for food it's just a way to learn trapping be hard for me to think of a place that didn't have norway rats And we'll get into more specialized man-made traps. Now, the way I did it growing up and the way that I've done it, and I've had these several times in the past, but a conibear trap. You can look those up, a conibear trap. Uh, they basically look like a big metal square that you bend, I guess, 180 degrees on itself, and they snap back. And the way these work is they snap around the animal's neck and or body, and they suffocate it. So, you know, as the animal breathes out, it can't breathe back in again or it just snaps the neck. They're conibear traps. They're big heavy-duty wire traps. If you don't lose them or something, they pretty much last forever. They make them in all manner of sizes, you know, for all manner of things. Rabbits to raccoons to coyotes to beaver. Conibear traps are my favorite metal trap. They do make leg traps. I know those are common and and we're kind of the classic trap that you metal trap that you think of. I don't like those. I have never used those. At least I don't remember ever using those except for just fun playing around with them. Because I don't I don't like an I I know sometimes in your trap you will catch an animal wrong, catch it by the back foot or something like that. I know that happens. It certainly happened to me, but I don't want to intentionally set out for that animal to suffer and I want it to suffer as little as possible. So the leg traps are a thing. I'm not telling you not to use them, but I think if you're going to pay money for a trap, you might as well get a conibear. In my experience, their ads are more effective and they're more humane. They also make live traps, which you've probably seen. They're just like a box with a mouth at both ends that an animal goes in, they get bait or something that's in the live trap, and then the door shut on both sides. I suppose you could if you wanted to learn trapping because there's a lot to it, where to put the trap, how to bait it, how to set the triggers. You could do that and just let the animal go if you wanted to. But once you get that animal on a live trap, you still have to kill it. So hopefully you're somewhere where you can have a gun and just a little 22, you know, a Heritage Rough Rider or a Ruger Wrangler. Or just some kind of 22 handgun is really all you need. And if not that, then a good sturdy stick or purpose-built club. But those, those are the metal traps. And you're still going to need those even if you're trapping or snaring. You're still going to want something to dispatch that animal. Because like I said, even even if you're a good snarer, even when I was professionally trapping you know, coyotes and, and getting quite a few coyotes, most of them would get a proper snare around the neck and they'd be dead when I got there and they'd die pretty quickly. But some wouldn't. Some would get caught wrong. They wouldn't suffocate. They'd get caught around the back leg. And then, you know, I'm not going up on a on a trapped coyote to try and set it free i'm killing it i was trying to kill it in the first place 
So you need a way to dispatch that animal. You need... I, I, I hope you can have a gun, but if you live somewhere you can't, or you're, you're listening to this and you're younger, your parents won't let you have a gun, you're going to need something for some distance to dispatch that animal. A staff or a stick or something like that. So if you're listening to this, you're thinking, okay, I, I maybe want to give this a try. I mentioned some ways to get started, but if you want to get started snaring... And I should mention, if you go to GoodShepherdTraining.com, go to Patreon. If you want to become a patron, I do things on there that I don't do for everybody else. Uh, one of the things on there, when I was professionally trapping, I've got my snare kit on there with pictures and everything. Just one of the small things that's on Patreon if you want to support. But anyway, if you want to get started snaring, a few things I would suggest. Like I said, metal snare wire. Unless you're snaring birds, and then in which case you can still get very, very fine, thin snare wire. But some kind of steel wire. And then the next thing, a multi-tool. Because you're going to need to bend and shape that wire and twist that wire and tie that wire and cut that wire. So some kind of multi-tool. You're generally going to need a good sized knife for making stakes to hold these snares in the ground. You can buy you can buy stakes, I guess, but uh, if you're anywhere with wood and trees, you can just make stakes. You also may want it to make triggers, like we talked about bending over a sapling and making a snare so the animal walks in it. That that bent over tree straightens out and puts tension and catches that animal and springs that snare around the animal for making triggers and things like that. And you can look up how to make triggers. It would be way easier for you to just look up pictures and for me to describe it on on just audio. But you'll want a good knife for that. So you've got your metal wire. You may also want some smaller or thinner metal wire. Or just some very small string like fishing string. Because you may want to tie other things like your triggers and things up. Or suspend a snare. Let's say there's a limb that's too high. You may want to suspend that snare a foot down below that limb. So that it's kind of hanging on that fishing string. So that when the animal walks through it, it catches it where its head's going to be. So some other kind of string like that. It can just be cheap, you know, string. You generally get cheap fishing string at Walmart for a dollar or two. You may or may not be using bait, but just look up common baits for the animals you're using. Like I said, if you're doing birds, then something as simple as rice or oats or sunflower seeds. Or even just save up your bread scraps. Just save up your bread scraps or when a loaf of bread starts to turn moldy, throw it in the freezer and use that. But whatever you're trying to trap. If you want to use bait, I had a lot of success doing snares without bait. But if you're going to use bait, you may want to use that and have that somewhere in your kit. You're also probably going to want some kind of marking tape. Marking tape to mark where your traps are, where your snares are. That can be something as simple as like a white piece of toilet paper in the tree. You can buy that really cheap, you know, fluorescent colored ribbon if you want. It's super cheap. You can use that. Some kind of marking tape. or you, It could be a can of spray paint, white spray paint that you just spray a little spot on the dirt or something. Like let's say you're walking on a, on a designated trail or a road or a logging road. When your trap is on the right side or your snare is on the right side off the trail, then you do a little mark on the trail on that side of the road so you know to walk off the road and find your snare there. Another thing, if you're trapping anything that has a decent nose on it, doesn't really apply to birds in my experience, but if you're going to trap things like coyotes or fox or things like that, a good pair of gloves. You don't want to touch the snare with your hands. You don't want them to smell you. In fact, it's a good idea and a good practice to take your metal traps or your snares and just dip them in a creek or in some kind of water before you go to set them up or put them in a plastic bag where your scent doesn't get on them. You know, leave them out in the rain and wear gloves when you put them in your sack or whatever. And then obviously, like we talked about, a way to dispatch the animal. I talked about a twenty two, but honestly, when I was doing it a lot, I have a little three fifty seven Magnum J-frame that I keep in my pocket. And I would generally keep it loaded with mostly thirty eight Special. Just because that's what I have and I like that gun and it's one of my EDC guns anyway. I'm still going to have my defensive EDC gun and why not just use that to dispatch coyote or deer or whatever needs to be dispatched and then also have it for defense but a good 22 i would never fault you for carrying that and then a lot of this like i said is is going to be a learning curve it's going to be trial and error get out there and try it you know me you may set snares for a while and not catch anything but if you keep at it 
and think about it with the brain God gave you and think about, you know, how to set that snare, how to make those traps more effective time after time. You may get a couple times where you see your snare got knocked down but didn't catch anything. So you know an animal touched it, but you don't know and you got to think about and figure out how to make it catch that animal. Like I said, maybe you put some sticks or, or obstacles on either side of it to make them go where you want them to go. Or maybe you just move your snare to where you see they've been going. So, a lot of different things, a lot of different ways to trap animals. I hope you'll at least consider it. Uh, you may have guessed that I like survival and whatever you want to call it, survivalism. Things like that. There's a big thing in the survival community. Oh, just have some wire to make snares or just have some string to make snares. But like I said, it's it's quite a learning curve. So don't think you're just going to have that in your pocket and just be super successful. Get out there and practice now when you don't need it. When, when if you don't catch something, you can just go to Walmart and get food or wherever you go to get food and be good at it. Like I said, I even when I lived in a big urban area, I still trapped so that I didn't forget or so that I keep my skills sharp. And especially during when things were getting crazy in the city during the pandemic and the rioting and looting. And I have food stored, that's part of it. But I was confident I could get fresh meat for my wife and I, whatever comes, that God will provide for me. But I also know that I'm supposed to use the talents that he's given me. So use those talents, sharpen them, or maybe get some new ones. If you've never thought about trapping, you know, give it a try in one of those different instances you know, fish or birds or, or whatever it is for you. I hope you'll at least consider it a manly pursuit. I hope that you'll consider getting out there and trying trapping, snaring. With that, guys, I want to say thanks for listening to this episode of the Alpha Male Podcast. Just a few updates. If you haven't seen it yet, we got Alpha Male Metal Mugs. Metal mugs, metal coffee cups are great. That's my go-to cup every day is a metal coffee cup. I have kind of my one go-to stainless steel coffee cup. I ordered the very first alpha male metal coffee cup. They're great for cooking stuff on an open fire, whether that's coffee or soup or maybe, you know, you catch that dove in a snare and you want to sit down and uh, make some coffee and roast that meat by a fire like a man. Or maybe you want to use it to boil water to purify it there's all manner of things that a good metal cup comes in handy for and these ones say you know the alpha male podcast you can check those out at goodshepherdtraining.com also have an episode coming out about the modern minute man about how we should be ready in a moment's notice for different things so if you think that interests you make sure you're liked and subscribed so when it comes out you'll know so whatever platform you're listening to on this just hit subscribe if you could hit a couple of stars or write a review, only takes a couple of seconds, and hopefully it'll help another man that might benefit from this see the message. If you want to contribute, again, goodshepherdtraining.com, there's a Patreon link on there. You'll see pictures of, if you become a patron, you'll see pictures of a snare kit on there. You'll see pictures of me hunting in the past and all, all different kinds of things. Again, goodshepherdtraining.com, scroll down to Patreon. There's a link right there. These are free for you to listen to, and I like it that way. I don't want there to be any barrier for men to listen to this podcast, but they're not free to put out and produce. There's a website you got to pay for. There's a server hosting that I have to upload these to so you guys can listen to them. And I thank all the patrons that, that have gotten this podcast and helped move it to where it is now. It's a sincere thank you. I'm very humbled that anybody listens, that anybody chooses to support a simple servant of God like me, and I really mean that. With that, a tactical tip of the day, I'm going to make it something not related to trapping in case you listen to this whole thing and you decide you're not going to trap. Maybe you'll get something out of it. This is not really something you probably don't already know, but I just want to reinforce it. We talked about being prepared, being ready as you're called to be as a man and especially as an alpha male. Try and keep your gas tank above halfway. And it's one thing if you're like on a road trip and you're planning your stops, but I'm talking about day to day, going to work, coming home, going to the gym, coming home, going to Walmart, coming home, going to run errands. Keep your gas tank above halfway. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And if something does happen and you can't get gas, 
you know, we all saw the ridiculous toilet paper shortage of whatever, whenever that was and the ammo shortage apocalypse that we've been going through, the ammo shortage we've been going through for years. What if the next thing we can't get is gas? You know, think about what a wonderful thing gas is and think about even something like I drive a Hummer. If I get 15 miles to a gallon, that's 15 miles for $4. Think about if some big disaster or something bad happens and for some reason I can't get gas, whatever that reason is. Think about you can go 60 miles in an hour if you're going 60 miles an hour. Think about if you have to walk that, even if you're in great shape. I've been blessed to go overland 52 miles in a day and I wouldn't want to have done that the next day. But I can go 60 miles in an hour. Think about that. And just try and keep your gas tank above halfway. Like I said, you don't want something bad to happen. You can't get gas and you have an eighth of a tank or your lights on. And really consider putting a spare thing of gas in the back of your trunk or your car or your truck or whatever it is. I do generally keep two jerry cans full in the back of the Hummer. They're strapped down. I've had them back there for years. Obviously changed the gas out, but they've not leaked. They've not smelled. They've not anything like that. The old military jerry cans. I think these are like a a remake. They're not the original military jerry cans, but they're just a remake of that. Put some stable in them, keep them back there for a year or so. You know, that's another 10 gallons. 10 gallons get me a long way. And if I have to get somewhere and I can't get gas or I have to get somewhere quick or get out of danger quick, it's just such an easy thing. Like I said, you're going to have to fill your gas tank anyway. Why not just keep it above half a tank? So really consider that as an alpha male. Again, talking about the pictures and stuff on Patreon, you can check out. I've got a couple of pictures of just the back of the Hummer where I've got my, you know, May Day survival rations back there, a couple of months or years worth of food back there and gas cans and a few other things. Anyway, men, with that, just a tactical tip is an appreciation for listening to the end. Get out there, be strong, prove yourself a man. Have a blessed day.